Hey everybody, Matt Burke here. Tonight I'm going to be reviewing Kun the Barbarian number eight. Uh, finally starting to catch up, man. Uh, there's only a few more left, and then we'll be there. Then we're going to have to start. Um, yeah, like going to be once once a month. <laughs> but I got a bunch of bunch of other uh, comics I want to review for you guys. I got some old ones, some new ones, all, all kinds of good stuff. So this is uh, the cover that I got. Not really really big uh, fan of it to be honest with you, but it is what it is. I think it's a bit lit, but yeah, you know, it is what it is. We got ads right here for Savage Sword of Conan, which we did a review on that. Thought that was pretty cool. A step in the right direction uh, with a couple of tweaks, and I think it'd be a, a perfect perfecto. And then we got um the uh, the, the first trade with uh, the first four issues, and it's got a cover by Dan Pinozium, freaking awesome. And then Con the Barbarian, the old Marvel um, stuff, basically um, in an omnibus and Savage Sword of Conan in an omnibus form. They're probably going to make more too, and they're oversized, so. And uh, the color has been updated, so it's, it's, gonna, it's kind of a must-have. Um, yeah, they kind of, on, on these books, they show you exactly where the story is taking place. And this is in Shadazar. It's been there for a while. Um, it looks like they're going to be doing these every four four to five issues. It's it's going to be like one one artist, and they're going to switch off a little mini story, which I think is cool. I was wondering how, because they, how they're going to have the Robert De La Torre do all the, all the drawing for the whole year and I was just like dang that's that's kind of a lot man they probably need to like switch it up every every four issues or something like that bring out another dude and so I, th I think that's what they're doing which is awesome but uh yeah man here we are just a little recap um on the road of kings following a raucous night of celebration Conan of Samaria found himself attacked by Chandra an ally possessed by nefarious spirits Forced to slay the woman, Conan wandered the streets of Shadazar in the days, haunted by memories that became dis uh, debased, until he found his way to the hidden hideout of the uh, Glory Hounds. Yet inside, he found the, th the thieves' guild members slaughtered by their own. The Sumerians' former friends similarly possessed swords and sickles set to kill. After a vicious battle that would have fallen any normal man, Conan was confronted once again by the evil let loose in the Temple of Bel and soon found his own body invaded by those cruel specters who named Conan their latest weapon in service to a greater evil, which would be, um, which would be, uh, well, you'll see. And then right here, uh, we're, we're they're, story wise, they're showing the, the little story of, um, queen of the black coast. And that's a story with him and, um, his, his lady, man. Uh, uh and you're going to see a little bit right here. He's uh, having a little a little bout on the on the ship right here during his pirate days. You're strong, Lingri. Oh, but not strong enough. Well done, my lion. Is your sparring session complete, or are you ready to to face one more opponent? So she's about to. Uh, that's been lit, his old lady. She's uh, you know, talking some trash, basically. About to come at him swinging you know they're having a little a little tussle you know and you know yeah they, they love her or they love each other sorry you know and you flash forward to dun 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 conan's possessed man he's got a demon possession going on this i thought this is pretty metal something different I'm really digging this page right here it's a cool splatter or oh, i'm sorry splash page sacrifice thrice mark for death part four sorry guys a little Rebel 100 right here. Take a tug. Pretty good whiskey. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it. All right. Written by Grimm's, <laughs> Jim's um, diabolical Doug Brace Wright. Dangerous Diego Rodriguez. Rascally Richard uh, Starkins. That's pretty funny. Calamitoris Chris but uh, Batera. Merciless Matt Murray. That's pretty cool. I like how they do that. <laughs> a high stakes heist is in Shadow has claimed the lives of Conan's accomplices in the Thieves Guild known as the Glory Hounds. Their target, an artifact called Terum's Touch, that Conan recognizes as a shard of cursed black stone from the earlier days of adventure. Watch it. Watch where you walk, oaf. He just looks at him all crazy as hell. Now the three spirits let loose from the uh, shard have taken a hold of the Sumerian's body, puppeteering him 
to their uh, will just as they did his allies. We sensed you had been touched by our master's grace, but now we see more, so much more. So, you know, you thought you could break the vessel as the spear slayer did in the past ages. Impressive, but was only a moment's victory in this war of the ages. And that's, you know, kind of the barbarian number four when he's going back into the black uh, or the green goo. And now you fight with Tulsa Doom. So there you go. Yeah, man. He's under um, basically kind of Tulsa Doom's magic at this point. Um, right here. As the spirits swim through Conan's mind, grim memories wash over him like dark waves crashing against the shore. After Baylid's death, Conan carried the ancient picked blade as he trekked through the jungles of Kush. It's funny how Robert E. Howard uses like real like um some some of the some of the locales that he has are actual real places on, on you know in the world and wielded it against a murderous shapeshifter who stalked him in the grasslands. Pretty cool. Many years of travel across so many lands. There were times where he was sure he didn't have the blade at all. But the unbiden again it uh, it appeared once again. A strange keepsake to the boy from Samaria and burned with keen curiosity. By the time he reached Shadazor, the wanderlust had left him. All he wanted to do was drown his pain and his mind. When meat and money ran dry, he sold the bit the, the blade <laughs> without a second thought, breaking pact with the past for a moment's pleasure. A noble fool, such a prize is worthy more than the mere gold. We must recover the relic for our purpose. So now he's got to go and basically find out where that blade's at. These demons took hold of his body. He's, he's searching for that for that blade. He's trying to find some leads. He's going to this pawn shop, right? And um, this this pawn shop owner's like, son's coming out, you know. He's got some crazy hair, though, I tell you. You don't want to mess with that hair, man. It's like a... It's like Ronald the Barbarian from, from Mickey D's. Um, before the boy can finish his words, talking shit, Conan still cuts the air and uh, loudly clashes with a kitchen carver. Damn fool, I'll cut your thumbs off for that. <laughs> Let's see here. Ooh, he gives him a nice little punch right there, man. He's a large lad, and to... Uh, Handling ruffians, pickpockets, and other troublemakers who could cause uh, commotion in his uncle's pawn shop. But this, this is uh, decidedly more deadly. Look at that, man. He gives him a little cleave right there. Doesn't even phase him. Yeah, now he's, now he's, a, little, now he's a little scared. Well, what are you? He's coming right at him. Hack. Just takes him right, just a big chunk right, out, right in the center. Going through the hand and everything, man. Whew. This guy's terrified. Speak fast and true, or we'll tear it from your mind. Where is the picked sword? So he's having to go on this wild goose tape just to find this stuff. I'm just tear it through all the all these little low level people from Shadazar. Just to get that uh that sword. Then, at last, the terminus, a museum of relics from ages past, and far by well-heeled uh, merchants and academics. Meet his grace. One of your frost-haired sages brought an old picked sword for all for a hay roll. Two past weeks, two weeks past. Give it here or suffer, suffer the wrath. So they're charging at him. Ooh, damn. Yeah, he ain't gonna. He ain't gonna. He's gonna be hip hopping around for that. Against the supernaturally charged Sumerian, the bloodshed is terrifying and, in, and over in a flash. Yeah. These guys are terrified, man. This guy's coming right out. Conan just can't break free. And then he's he's having a vision from inside. A maelstrom of memory. Is your sparring session complete or are you ready to face one more opponent? Belit. Swirling deep within the Sumerian's stolen soul. Do these things not please you? 
Are, are they not beautiful as I am? No. Please, just take it and go. No. Fine objects to craft, to, to impress, but they are shallow, empty. The past is a weapon. In times of great need, its steel rings a clarion call when blood runs cold. So it's fighting, man. He's fight, trying to fight these demons off. Ning! The past is a weapon. Do you, you have done well, weapon. Now take our treasure. Sharp and ready. We shall corrupt a sword that was a spear and feed in the in the fallen till Master Tulsa Doom's spirit wakes once more. Perhaps she'll take my perhaps she'll take my life instead. So he's talking to the demons. They're trying to still trying to take over the mind. Do not fight this warrior. Your body serves us now. This is no prayer, Sumerian. This is a promise. An unbreakable pact painted in bright blood and moonlight. You are not strong. You are not strong enough to resist. <laughs> so now she's fighting with the with the uh, pulse of doom demons within Conan. Um, we shall live this life full and throttled to into fearlessness. Fearless. Cool little shot right there. You know, he's just pulling that sword out or putting it in actually. And then we die. Even gods shall. <laughs> At their lost. Man, dude. Conan does not fear death. It is natural, inevitable. My words will fade. I uh, remember him from previous issues. If you haven't, you guys gotta go check him. But hold fast to their spirit. He's the one that's connected to that spearhead blade. It's all connected. And that was her from the first four issues, too. And arise. Finn, I, you know, I don't think, I wonder if it's Finn, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So they're, they're advertising. We did a review of this too, the Savage Sword of Conan. Uh, right here, um, in this part six of uh, Robert E. Howard and his uh, Ages I'm Dreamed Of, they're going to talk about the um, the Black Stone a little bit. It's a pretty cool little little page about that. And then you got the chain mill right here. Uh, we're going to jump into, uh, and then there's there's going to be next issue. We'll be doing a, a review of that next week as well. Almost fully caught up, like I was saying. There's only a few covers in here. I think I'm uh, definitely digging that one the most. You kind of see, yeah, it makes him, looks kind of young. Got the old cone in. The, that one's pretty cool too, but yeah, I don't know. But definitely, uh, that, was a, that was a cool book. Definitely give it two horns way up. I like the whole, like, you know, possession thing that's been, Definitely going into some some dark, you know, almost like zombies and demons and possession over the past, you know, eight issues. Um, definitely going to check them out. If you guys want to, you can check out my books. Uh, if you want to support me as a channel, go to butchcleaver.com. And it's uh, these books right here. I got one and two. It's about a butcher who gets killed and he's brought back to life by a voodoo curse. And that curse gives him the power to weaponize bone on a molecular level. So he has to use that power for revenge, reckoning, and maybe redemption. It takes place in this town right here, Oubliette. You got old Butch Cleaver right there overlooking. And uh, this is the uh, second one right here um, where you got Butch and um, shows us basically why he is the way he is. You know, it shows him as a kid. He has to, you know, how he comes up in the in the town of um, Oubliette. And uh, he's got to face off, you know, against a uh, lot of crazy ghosts and ghouls. Um, you guys... I want to check it out, you know, if you're in um, dark fantasy, horror westerns, and whatnot. And as always, folks, thanks for watching. Um, if you guys want, you can check me out um, on Thursdays where I have different guests called Open the Gates. We do that show at um, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or I'm sorry, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also uh, Saturday nights um, for um, Metal Movies and Brewskies Live, we do that 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for watching, folks. Always remember to be bold, be brave, and roll the bones to know your role. I'll see you guys later. Night.